Hi, welcome to Titan 9 SQL Data Refresh. This tool is intended to easily and quickly refresh data in development databases and automatically adjust to minor schema changes, perform optional data depersonalization, as well as a few other data refresh features. <clears throat> okay, first thing we need to do is pick a source database. Just move the mouse over to the source database button, click it, it pops a connection dialog. You pick your server name, you pick your database, we're going to pick AdventureWorks 2008 and we're going to connect to it. The button shows us some statistics as far as the version of SQL Server, the database, uh, the user, and their credentials. Now we need to pick a target database. We're going to open up the connect dialog again. This time we're going to pick AdventureWorks 2008 underscore dev and we're going to connect to it. This scenario, what we're going to simulate is moving data from our production AdventureWorks database to our development AdventureWorks database. Next thing we need to do is press the Analyze Tables button and it is going to now analyze the schema from the two databases and compare them. It's going to look for tables with identical names and columns with identical names. And <clears throat> it's going to start mapping them dynamically. At the end of the analysis, it gave us a warning. And this warning is telling us that there is one table with mismatched schemas. The table is called data types. We're going to dismiss this dialog. Let me go over this the body of this list view right now. We have a column called table name. It has all the tables in the database. It has a checkbox to include them or exclude them from the refresh. There's a column called match type and that tells us what type of match. If it's identical, everything matches 100%. If it's partial, there's something missing or something different. In this case, it has partial not null, so there is a a column in here that's not null. That's a little special. Next column is source rows. It counts, gives us the data count of all these tables. The target rows is in the destination and it shows us all the counts for those. They're the same here because I've done this refresh over and over again. The last column is status. It tells us what's going on for this table. Right now it says they're selected refresh that's the current status and as it progresses it will give us different statuses. I can optionally come in here and I can right mouse click and say select none and now all the tables are not selected. I can manually individually pick certain tables for the refresh. Only those will be included in the refresh. I can select all again for the purpose of this demo I want to show you one more thing. There's a group here. There's a refreshable group. These are all the tables that we can refresh because they exist in both databases. At the bottom, we can see that there is another group called Missing and Source Database. There are two tables. They're not in the source database. They uh, exist in essentially in the development database. Any tables that are not existing in both databases aren't eligible for a refresh. I'll scroll back up to the top again. I've selected all the tables. What I need to do now is push this button called refresh tables and it will start refreshing the data. Table by table it will truncate the table and then um, like in a data pump fashion extract the data from the source and move it to the target. It doesn't take very long. It relaxes all the refractional integrity to perform this and it goes pretty uh, simple. And you can see a status as it's progressing down the status bar. It tells you how many rows are being transferred for large tables. Uh, you can see the target rows get changed to zero and then they update as it moves it and and now it
completed the, the refresh. And we have a, a, a low completion status. This here shows us what uh, database was our source. It shows us which one was our target. Shows us how many we had selected for transfer. Shows us the log size at the start, which was 120 megabytes. The log size at the end, which was 120 megabytes. You can see we're managing the log properly for you. And then how many tables were transferred successfully? 72, so all the tables were transferred successfully. Uh, there's also a note here. It says newly added, not null column for the table DBO data types column new column was handled using the empty string since there was uh, not a value in our production database but our development database has specified as not null we needed a value we default to that value to just an, an empty string to uh, perform the refresh we can optionally send this completion statistics to the development team you can Perform these refreshes and um, in the afternoon or whenever you want and then have it send essentially this information to the team to let them know that the database just got refreshed and they can start working on their tasks. Well the big problem that this solves is typically what I've seen is to refresh data in development environment they will perform a backup of production and then they will restore it into development which which works fine but it overwrites all your work it gives you a, a, a copy of the production database which in some cases is really good because you can exercise your your scripts to uh, uh, to change it to the proper schema to add your store procs that you changed and everything but sometimes you need fresh data quickly and especially in the, the fast uh, development cycles and it just takes extra time here it took 33 seconds to refresh this database so it was pretty quick uh, another thing we can do is we can select none of the tables I'm just going to scroll up to the top and if I had some some type of a test scenario where I was going to somehow destroy the data for a couple tato tables I could just say I want to refresh four tables I could say refresh these tables and it'll just take a few seconds it took four seconds to refresh those tables now I could perform my unit test if my unit test failed or I wanted to do another unit test I could refresh those four tables again this is real nice when your unit test actually destroys or consumes the data in a way that you can't run your unit test the second way. And there's a lot of uses for the tool and the primary purpose is just to get fresh data fast and easy. And it also depersonalizes data. That'll be in a separate video, but it will depersonalize data so that you can be compliant with certain types of uh, issues. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was very helpful. If you'd like to know more about this tool, please go to www.titan9.com. Thank you.